homemaking really just provides this freedom almost. There are just things that like I have skills that I have developed as a homemaker that I never in a million years, like 10 or 12 years ago, would have thought that I would have been able to pursue. But I love the fact that homemaking like gives us that opportunity. It just provides so much creative freedom. My name is Lisa, mother of eight and creator of the blog and YouTube channel Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Today I'm having on my friend Andrea from Pine and Prospect Home. We're going to talk about homemaking, some of the distractions that people, that mothers and homemakers can face, especially in this modern world. Some of our ways that we like to overcome those, winter homemaking, trying to make things beautiful in the middle of the mundane, some budget decorating. Andrea is a great source for that over on her website, pineandprospecthome.com and her YouTube channel and her Instagram all by the same name. So she is definitely a wealth of knowledge and information. And I think you're going to really enjoy this discussion. Andrea, thank you so much for joining me. Andrea is a real life friend of mine. We've had the opportunity to hang out multiple times in real life. I've been to her house. She's been to my house. We were just chatting before that there's no snow right now in Michigan, which is really weird for her. And so she's understanding what the rest of us who live like lower understand about winter and how ugly it is because it's all brown. So we can get into that too, like how you're keeping your spirit alive as a homemaker through this. So let's start with introductions. For those who don't know you, tell us about you and your blog and your homemaking course and your YouTube channel and all that good stuff. Thank you for having me, Lisa. I really appreciate it. I love being on here with you. And um, yeah, so a little bit about myself. I started my blog in 2017 and kind of a unique story between Lisa and I. I was kind of struggling with my blog (laughs) and I'm trying to remember. I think it was just a year later. I kind of was... I was about to call it quits. Honestly, I just thought I can't figure this out. This is too hard. And then Lisa reached out to me and she asked if I would be interested in taking her blogging course. And I was like, yeah, of course I would love to take it. And so that kind of changed everything for me. And I don't know if Lisa really realizes just how that was such a huge turning point for me and my blog. And I just will forever be grateful to Lisa for it was probably just like, I was probably one of so many that you asked to take the course, but to me, it just feels so special because it was like God opening a door for me when I was ready to throw in the towel. And so I took Lisa's course and it was amazing. And I applied everything that she talked about. And now here we are. Let's see, that was like 2018, right after Caleb was born. And yeah, now the Lord has just blessed tremendously. And the blog has just far surpassed anything I ever could have imagined. And shortly after applying all those things that she taught me to my blog, I started a YouTube channel and the Lord has blessed that as well. And so now my husband and I, we still just look at each other and we're like, how did this happen? (laughs) And a lot of it goes back to Lisa and just her providing that course for me. And I'm just really thankful for that. But anyways, so I started this blog um, all about uh, just basically inspiring people to that they could have a beautiful home on a budget. So that was like the whole premise of my blog to show people that like you don't have to have a lot of money to create a beautiful home. So I would do a lot of like thrifting and DIY projects and decorating on a budget and things like that. And so I did that for a long time and I still do that because I just I love to create beauty. I really appreciate. And just love, you know, my home. And so uh, I still do that. But the Lord just sort of put this deeper desire on my heart. And over the past couple of years, I would say three or four years, God's really been working in my heart, just as far as like, like, how do I really want to impact people? And it was just, I wanted to do so much more than just share paint colors or, you know, talk about new pillows. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. After a while, there's only so much of that you can do. And I wasn't just going to switch my house all the time just for the sake of my blog or my YouTube channel, because that's not real life. And I just had this deeper longing to kind of share with women what God was kind of teaching me as a homemaker. And so 
Anyways, I, am I talking too much? <laughs> no, okay? you're, you're good. This is okay. all really good. And I've been to Andrea's home and it is beautiful. And she shares whenever you're there and on her YouTube channel, but when you're there in real life, all the things that they've touched with their own two hands that they've DIY'd, that she's founded a thrift shop. It's it's very thoughtfully done, but it it truly is on a budget. I feel like sometimes I hear people say things are on a budget and then you hear like where they got it, they link the source and they just mean like target instead of anthropology. I, I don't even know my stores very well, so that might not be a good analogy, but I mean, it's yeah. still, if you're on a really small budget, it's still too much, right? Like yeah. you need to actually take the $80 couch set and make it your own yeah. from Craigslist versus like buying anything new. And that's, yeah, you've done that for sure in your home. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I do, I feel like I, I completely agree with you when I see people share like budget friendly finds and I click on those links, I'm just like, what? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just extremely frugal <laughs> and cheap, but, um, like I was on the floor, hot gluing our dining room rug back together this morning. And Mike is like, just buy a new rug. Like we have the money for this now get a new rug. And I'm like, no, I can fix this. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Like <laughs> rugs are expensive. We don't need a new one. It's just this, it's just this one spot that's fraying. I can fix it with a hot glue gun. <laughs> I don't know. I I think that I will always be that frugal person, but, and I still like, don't get me wrong. I still love sharing all of those things. I love to inspire women that they can create beauty with a very small budget, but just within the past year, especially God was just laying something sort of deeper on my heart. And so basically my YouTube channel sort of shifted a little bit. I started sharing more on just homemaking and motherhood and things like that. Um, just sort of like the everyday. And I don't know, I still felt like I couldn't quite get deep enough on my YouTube channel. Like I, there were so many thoughts that I wanted to share with women. And I prayed about like a podcast maybe. And I, I still think about that at times. And, and I thought about a subscription and ultimately I settled on the idea of creating a course. I really enjoy teaching. I love sort of sharing what God has been teaching me in my life. And so, um, yeah, I think that's sort of the reason for this podcast. I, I created a course. It's called the heart of homemaking and it's just like, it has close to 30 videos and around 20 printables. And it's just, and everything and anything that has to do with homemaking, I've tried to touch on in this course. Um, and it's taught from like a biblical worldview. Um, it's a gospel centered course. And so, um, I'm just super excited about it. And I know it's not a course that you necessarily need, Lisa. You're an amazing homemaker, but I guess that's kind of the topic of our conversation today. So that's why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know if you look into your audience demographics over on YouTube, but are you mostly, do you find that people are following you who uh, are a little bit younger than you who are starting off on their homemaking journey, who are looking for guidance and like cooking from scratch, cleaning, budget decorating? Uh, is that typically who you're reaching? Yeah, for sure. I, I wouldn't say that's my largest audience, oddly enough. <laughs> I have a lot of women who are older that watch my channel, but we sent out a survey a while ago, actually, for my YouTube audience. And we had uh, women, you know, kind of fill out these surveys. And I was actually pretty surprised by a lot of like more middle aged women that are still interested in improving their skills as a homemaker. So that was kind of encouraging. But yeah, there is definitely that audience of women who are younger, who are just looking for help and encouragement. I think that when this really hit me, uh, I just I was talking to a friend earlier this year, and she was kind of sharing with me how she didn't really have like that mother figure in her life to sort of teach her what like homemaking really was all about. And so like she spent a lot of her childhood in daycares and in front of the television, and she didn't really have that example. And she was saying like how she wished she would have had that. And I think that's when sort of the seed was planted for this idea. I think that there are just things that I do that I don't even think about because my mom did them growing up, you know, and I just had that example and I'm so thankful for that. But I know there are so many women who they don't yeah. have that example. They have no idea where to start and they want to be a good homemaker, 
but they never saw it. They don't know how to put it into practice. They don't know what homemaking really looks like. And so I think that conversation is what of what sort of sparked this idea. And I thought, you know, I know that like, I, this is my 14th year as a homemaker. That's really not that long. There are women who have been doing this for so much longer, but at the same time, you know, we are supposed to be continually teaching those that are younger and with whatever knowledge we have and passing that on. And, and so, yeah, that was kind of my, my thought process behind it. Yeah. I do think it's funny. Sometimes I, it's just started to occur to me, like in the last couple of years that I am, I'm not older, but in a lot of ways I am moving into the role more and more of being the older women yeah. teaching the younger. And that's really hard to wrap my brain around because I'm yeah. so young, right? Like, I just, yeah. how can this be? <laughs> but I feel that too. Like, oh, wait, because my youngest sister, she's 11 years younger. Yeah. And she she's a homemaker now. She had her first baby. She's a stay-at-home mom. She asks me about bread and decor and we text and she's in a whole different season of life. And I'm like, wait, now if she's a homemaker and a mom now, then I am the older because I'm a more than a decade older than her. And so I think that 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 is a nice calling. And it's great that we have the internet to be able to actually facilitate that. Yeah, absolutely. So what all topics are your favorite to teach about? And what kind of topics do you have in your course? Like beautifying yeah. the home, cooking from scratch. What are some of yeah. your favorite things? Yeah, a, a lot of those things. I just, I really, I start off the course by basically just talking about like, first of all, like what our view of homemaking should be, what our attitudes should be towards homemaking, kind of the whole purpose behind homemaking. And I really like when I started to study this out, I immediately went to God's word. I just started reading and Genesis and it just sort of hit me. I don't know if you've ever thought about this. You probably have. Maybe I'm just like behind. But as I was reading God's word, it just sort of hit me like, wow, God was the very first homemaker like God himself. And it just like, it just brought tears to my eyes. And I started to study like the home that he created for Adam and Eve. And I studied that home and I studied like how we can try to create that environment within our own homes. And so that's kind of where the study began. And that's where the course kind of starts off just really diving deep and trying to understand that if we have our, if our heart posture is correct, and if we have the right attitude towards this and we really surrender to it, you know, society likes to tell us, it, it, we live in a culture that really glorifies and promotes self, you know, and homemaking kind of does the opposite of that. It's like very selfless job. You get little praise or thanks for it. You know, you are constantly serving, cleaning up, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it is something that you know, has brought me more joy and soul satisfaction than anything else I put my hands to because, you know, the Lord really got a hold of my heart and he helped me to understand how great and vital this role is within our homes. And so that's kind of how the course starts off. But then, yeah, it, <laughs> I, I talk about pretty much everything um, that has to do with homemaking. There is a segment on like just taking care of yourself and what type of foods we should be eating, um, like clean eating whole foods. And there's a whole section on organization, how to keep a tidy home, like just some daily habits and practices that I do that just help to keep my home tidy. I talk about non-toxic cleaning. I talk about um, like home decor, like you said, creating beauty within our homes, uh, thrifty decorating, uh, I talk about cooking and meal preparation and I don't have the list in front of me, but yeah, I, oh, I that's think okay. I, yeah, that's okay. I tried to cover like every aspect I could <laughs> that falls under, you know, homemaking. So, yeah, that's what I love about homemaking though. There, it's not just one thing. There are so many facets to it that you really get to lean into your creativity yes. And it can be actually really enjoyable. Yes, it's a lot of I love repetition. That. Yeah. And I talk about that too. Yeah, a, a lot of repetition, a lot of sacrifice. And there are some things that we want there to be a tidy little system, but really it just comes down to doing it every single day. And there's really no way, like no hack way around it. But I like to insert just moments of creativity throughout the mundane process of homemaking. And so I think that you know, having somebody to inspire you to do that yeah. is very helpful. 
right? Taking a quick break from this episode to tell you about my brand new course, Simple Sourdough. This one has been a long time coming. I have shared about sourdough over on my blog and my YouTube channel forever, but I finally compiled all of the information that you need to be successful with sourdough, uh, the starter, making your first ever loaves of bread, using the discard, so many things in my course, Simple Sourdough. You can find it at bit.ly slash farmhouse sourdough course. That's all one word, bit.ly by slash farmhouse sourdough course. The coolest thing about the new simple sourdough course is that there's a corresponding private Facebook group that is for students only. I'm really excited that that'll be a place where when you have specific questions, there'll be other students in there, sourdough enthusiasts, and we can all learn from each other. This is usually such a valuable asset because a lot of times you'll have a specific question that you don't want to filter back through the course for. It's all there, but sometimes you just want other people who are on the same journey as you. And I'm really excited to provide that course, which just the lifetime membership comes with the purchase of the simple sourdough course. Again, you can find that at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse sourdough course. So right now it's winter. It's gray. It's ugly. What is that looking like in your home right now? Like, how are you enjoying it and inserting some creativity into it? Yeah. So, well, first of all, I just want to say that I, I love what you just said. I think that, and that's something I touch on in, in the course, how homemaking really just provides this freedom almost to pursue things that you never thought you would ever. I mean, if you could go like back in time, Lisa, I'm sure did you, maybe you've always had the dream of, you know, doing what you are doing right now. But there are just things that like I have skills that I have developed as a homemaker that I never in a million years, like 10 or 12 years ago, would have thought that I would have been able to pursue. But I love the fact that homemaking like gives us that opportunity. And I don't know, I just wanted to address that because I, my sister and I were just talking about that, how it just provides so much creative freedom. And uh, to answer your question, like in these winter months, I think this is just for me personally, winter is the time for like being in the kitchen and baking, you know, making bread, uh, you know, developing your skills uh, as a cook, trying new recipes. I was talking to a friend the other day and she said she's going to make it a challenge this year to try one new recipe every week, which I thought was such a great idea because sometimes we can fall into sort of making the same things over and over again, <laughs> at least I can. And so I loved that idea. I was like, I should do that. Just what's something I've never made before, you know, that I've always wanted to try, but I've just never, I've never made it. Like I should just, that's a great challenge as a homemaker to just try to improve your skills uh, as a cook. Or another thing during these winter months, since you are kind of stuck inside, I sometimes I like to start to organize. It's not something I enjoy doing. But, you know, during these colder months is something I think that during the summertime, even here in Michigan, it's beautiful in the fall, late spring, we want to be outside, you know. And so I think these winter months, it's a good time to kind of organize, get rid of excess things, kind of minimize. So those are some things that I like to focus on this time of year, just creating that cozy atmosphere in your home that just feels so welcoming, you know, having candles lit, having something baking at all times, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've really come to love this time of year. <laughs> yeah. The sourdough starter hardly ever goes in the fridge. Like I'm constantly using it, trying new things. Not that I don't sourdough all summer, but I have a lot of things that I want to take the kids to during those months. And I have guilt when I don't, because there's so much going on out there that I don't want to be really in here. So yeah, I agree with you. The winter is just kind of the time that it gets dark really early and there's really nothing else to do than those kind of things. Are there any yeah. projects you guys are working on right now? Like anything you're doing in your home? Is that, was winter a good time for you to do that? I, you know, there, there are definitely some things that I like to tackle just because like I said, summertime, we live right on the lake. We love going to the beach as much as possible, being outside. So I would say outdoor projects are kind of reserved for the summer. Um, some things right now, there's nothing off the top of my head. We are trying to, we finished our basement last year. 
my husband framed it all in and drywalled it and put flooring down. And there's a little space down there uh, where we'd like to put a bathroom so that if we host guests, they can just stay downstairs. You know, they have everything they need down there. Okay. Yeah. They don't, they don't have to come upstairs and use the bathroom. So that's a project we're going to start here um, in the future. But I don't know, for some reason, like going into this year, I haven't been quite as, I mean, I know I'm launching a course, but this has been in the works for months, you know? Yeah. There is so much work leading up to this that, that we finished far before Christmas even, because I really wanted to enjoy the Christmas season. So I think the bulk of this course was completed like early November. But um, just going into January, I've really just felt this, I don't know, some people choose like a word for the year. I didn't necessarily do that. But I was really praying about this year and what I wanted to focus on. And I just kept, I felt like I heard this still small voice, just be still. And, and I think that I tend to be someone who is just running around constantly. I feel like I have to be doing something all the time. Yeah. And this year, I just really want to focus on just being still and like being present in the moment. You know, last time on my phone, I just like I'm trying to leave it even in a different room and just really just being present, going slow, not feeling as if I have to accomplish all the things I think social media can sometimes do that to us Mm -hmm. as homemakers. And that's something I talk about in the course as well. I have a whole segment on social media and how it can really affect us as women. And I think about my mom, when she first got married, I told this story in the course as well. But when she got married back in the 80s, it was like 1985. Um, and they, my dad accepted a job as a youth pastor out in Connecticut and they moved into this apartment. And she said, when they pulled up to this apartment, it was like, I mean, it was bad. It was a bad situation. Yeah. (laughs) They were like in the middle of the city, but it was a duplex and the people living in there were like wannabe farmers. So they had like a baby calf at one point, there were geese all over the place, but like it was in the middle of a suburb of a larger city. It was like, it smelled horrible. They had fleas and ticks. It was just like really bad. But yeah, yeah. Like, but she was so proud of that home. She had no idea like what kinds of homes her friends had. She wasn't really in contact with like people from high school or college. Like it was just her and my dad. And she just tried to make this beautiful little apartment for him. And when he came home from work, she had a meal ready for him. And she was just so proud of it. They didn't have cable. She said they just played Monopoly a lot, like for fun, you know, they couldn't sit and watch or binge shows. Like she had no idea what was going on, like what kind of lives her friends had. Right. Like, but she was just so proud of that little apartment. And I compare that to 2023. And here we are just bombarded on social media with what everybody else has, what type of kitchens, what type of homes, what type of car they drive, what type of, you know, extracurricular their kids are involved in and just all the things. And we are constantly comparing, you know, and looking at our own lives and, and just feeling like we don't have enough or, you know, or just wanting more. And I, I really think as homemakers, we have to be so careful and put up you know, those, those safeguards and just really like be careful to guard our heart against that. Sometimes I long for, a t- you know, kind of the life that my mom had where she was just like clueless and she just loved their little apartment. You know, she didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And even, you know, in the early years of our marriage, like I would say I, when I, for the first two or three years of marriage with, with Mike, I didn't have I didn't even have a Facebook account. Like it was there, it was available and people were bugging me to get on there, but I didn't know about it. Like I, I was just like, I don't need that. You know, and and Instagram came even way later than that, you know, like probably seven or eight years into our marriage. I was just like, so I did have a little bit of that, but I just, I feel for women today who are just, they're sucked into that. And I just feel like that is what is causing so much anxiety and depression among women today. So sorry to go off on that, but (laughs) yeah, I think that's an important reminder. I know it's talked about a lot to the point of it sometimes feeling like beating a dead horse, but really it can't be overstated because it, it, I think the, especially the generation that's like 10 years younger than us, they don't really know that life. Like you were mentioning that the early part of your marriage, yeah, you actually did know that. And so did I, we didn't have internet when we first got married. We did not have smartphones, obviously. 
We didn't have even a TV or any streaming services. So just like your mom, <laughs> yeah. I had this little home. It, yeah. it needed a lot of paint, a lot of love, mm -hmm. I, a lot of slip covers, a lot of drop cloth fabric, and a lot of time. And I was so proud of it too. Like I, I remember just thinking this yeah. looks so good. I can't believe I did all of this. And I didn't, if I would have compared it like yep. to other things now, I mean, it would just look so bad. And I didn't know that I was really oh, proud of it. And we played games at night too. And so I don't know, like what, this is all something that like, I feel like a lot of times I talk about, but don't always have a solution for it because we yeah. do ultimately live in 2024. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you've done to help be more content as a homemaker and help to sort of live the life like your mom did? And like we did an early marriage that the youngins just don't even know exists. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, well, I think like, so I think you and I would both agree we are, we are drawn to beauty. So I think that's what kind of creates the pull towards Instagram you know, I enjoy looking at beautiful images of homes, you know, because it's, I don't know, it's fun for me, right? Like I enjoy design and decor, but I just think that it, you have to be careful to set up boundaries. I, for some reason, and, I, and you can tell me if you disagree with this, for some reason, I don't quite feel the same way. Like if I go on Pinterest, I think it's a little bit different than Instagram. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because there are people behind the yeah, accounts on Instagram. It, so you immediately feel like, oh my word, I'm not doing as much as she is. Or like, oh, she's such a she's so good at this. I, I'm horrible at this. Whereas Pinterest, for some reason, I don't end up feeling that way as much. I, I don't know. So I do think that Pinterest is a great place for inspiration where it doesn't kind of leave you feeling so like, Ugh, you know, down on yourself. But I love collecting home decor books. There's just nothing like sitting down with a hot cup of tea or coffee and just going through an actual book. I don't know, like I, I have like five or six of them. And I find myself going through them over and over. They never get old to me. I'll see something that I'm like, huh, I didn't notice that before, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's a, like, if you're really just trying to avoid social media, Same. I think that's a yeah. great, that's a great option is just kind of collecting some home decor books. And, you know, just constantly, it, I, I think every woman is different. Maybe some women don't struggle with comparison. For me, it's, it's, it's a struggle for me. I can, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I think it's just important to kind of recognize and be aware of your weaknesses. Like, okay, I find myself feeling this way after being on here and I'm starting to compare myself and I'm finding my identity in all the wrong things. And I'm starting to like pretty much idolize certain things. Um, so you kind of have to be aware of your own heart and like where your struggles lie. And I think that that's really important. So kind of just being aware of that. And, um, and so for me, it's just like, I really try to limit my time, especially on Instagram. I really just, I, I try, like I, as a blogger, and I'm so thankful for this, I have somebody running my Instagram and I know that might, you know, come as a shock to some people, but it's just, it's really good for like, you know, my mental health or whatever you want to call it, you know, to just yeah. not have to, um, and I still get on there. Like I will still post things in stories. Like I'll post moments and my stories and stuff. Oftentimes what I do is I'll just take a video and then I find a time during the day when I can just sit down and post. It's never live half the time, you know, cause I just don't want to be on my phone all the time around my kids. It's not very Insta <laughs> yeah. anymore, but just like having somebody manage that. And I talk about that too in the course and, and it's okay to just post something and then maybe get off. And that it can be such a time waster and it can really suck you in. And before you know it, so much time has gone by. And so just really being aware of your weaknesses and trying to set up boundaries for yourself. I know that there's like apps that'll even do it for you if you really need that. <laughs> I've never used one, yeah. but I've heard that they're pretty amazing when they tell you like how much time you spend. You know, it, it, it's kind of a shocker. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree with the Instagram thing and people might have a different thing. That's the, the, the one that gets them. But for me, Instagram is the one that's off my phone. Most of the time I just delete the app. And so whenever I have to post something, I'm like you, I have somebody that's, uh, that helps manage yeah. it. But whenever I have to post something that has to come from me, which happens, like I'd say once every week or two, I'll get the app back. I'll have it for a few days. And I notice that because the app's off my phone, 
I don't habitually go to it because I'm not trained to, but if I leave it on there too long, I start remembering that it's on there. It usually takes it like three or four days of being on my phone again for me to remember that I have Instagram and for that habit to be reestablished. Yeah. And you know, this all sounds like people are like, well, then just don't get on there as much. I'm like, well, maybe you don't struggle with this yeah. because yeah. I've shared these things before and people are like, that's dumb. Just don't get on there. I'm like, okay, like that's not how that works if you struggle with it. Yeah. So if you're like me and if it's on there and you habitually touch it and get on there and start reading stupid comments, like it's, it's something that should go. If it starts making you feel uneasy, you should yeah. be proud of your little space that you get to cultivate. You don't have to look outside and people also sometimes like, well, this is yeah. your job. You shouldn't encourage people to get off of Instagram. I'm like, you know what? If they want to get off Instagram, go for it. I just don't think most people are going to, yeah. but I think that I think it's good. I recommend it for the most part. It's a negative place to be. Like, have you ever gone down into the comments though, not just on your own posts, but other people's too. And you read them and you're, you're thinking these people need to get off the internet. Like they are just so unhappy. Like reading the things that they're upset about makes me think people get off the poor little lady, get off the internet. Like you sound so yeah. angry and you're getting yeah, angry over it, something that you just showed it. Like you really just need to delete the app for a little yeah. while and chill. Yeah. It's so true. And it, it's, it's sad really, but yeah, I love that idea of just completely deleting the app. I think that's really, really smart. And I agree. Like if something is starting to make you feel uneasy or doubt, you know, yourself or like, it's one thing to go on for inspiration, but then when you start to feel discontentment or you start to feel like, you know, well, I wish my home looked like that. Like I'm only stuck with this, this, and this. And I think that's when it becomes a problem because it can so easily turn from like going on to be inspired to suddenly like now you're like coveting all these other <laughs> things and, and your home can quickly become like, it, it starts to consume you. It can become yeah. like an idol in your life <laughs> where like all you're doing is searching Facebook marketplace, looking for a find like that one girl found on her, you know, <laughs> on her viral reel, you know, like, well, what can I find on Facebook marketplace? And how yeah, can I, right. you know, and it's just, it can, it can really start to snowball if you're not careful with it. I love the idea of just deleting it altogether, but ultimately just like, yeah, just try to be aware of, you know, how these things are making you feel and, and just put up boundaries. So yeah. I think that's super important for us in the, in the day and age we live in as homemakers. Let's talk about natural skincare. As a lot of us are trying to clean out our houses, our diets, skincare is something that is also really important because our skin is our body's largest organ and what goes on the skin does actually make its way in and affect our health. So it's important to choose quality, but one problem I've had over the years with natural skincare companies or DIYs, I've tried making my own lip balms, face serums, cleansers. They're great, but they don't have the same effectiveness as the drugstore or the department store brands that are full of chemicals and things I don't want in my body. Tubes & Co is an organic skincare company it's a small company that uses all natural ingredients. So for example, I have this tallow balm sitting here on my desk or my dresser, which is my desk for the day, that is made from grass-fed tallow, virgin olive oil, essential oils, and that's it. It's super luxurious on my skin. I love it during these colder months because my skin tends to dry out and look really lifeless but this product really nourishes it and brings it back to life. I also love Tubes & Co makeup. I currently have on the Tubes & Co eyebrow pencil, which is my favorite thing, the primer, the foundation, the mascara for a really simple, low makeup, but yet not just my bare splotchy face look. I love Tubes & Co makeup. It doesn't feel like I'm buying a healthy brand. It feels like really nice makeup that also happens to have extremely clean ingredients. You can check out Toops & Co and use the code farmhouse for 10% off over at toopsandco.com. That's T-O-U-P-S and co.com. Again, don't forget to use the code farmhouse for 10% off your order. Yeah, and I think too, something about the internet that really makes it difficult is I find that my focus gets divided. So I'll like get on one thing 
And then all of a sudden now, like my, like all I want to do is find a particular, like one thing I did recently was I needed a new rug for the living room and I should have hot glued together the little, uh, the jute. Cause I'm like, it keeps coming apart. I'm sick of it. Didn't think of hot glue. I tried sewing it, but anyways, I finally decided I need a new rug. And then like looking through just the infinite number of rugs online suddenly consumes me and I forget about other things. And so I think that might be the the biggest detriment. Yeah. Not only is the comparison and then you can literally get angry at content creators, which we've been on the other end of that too. And we're like, wow, you guys are angry. Um, but also just dividing your focus. There's enough time. I don't know if you, I'm sure you talk about like time management in your course, but there, I'm going to say it, there is enough time in the day to get done the things of the home if your focus isn't divided. Right. I agree. I think that's super important. And I talk about that. I for- totally forgot about that. Yeah, there's a whole section on time ma- management and just kind of putting your phone down. And it is amazing what we can accomplish, like our capacity as women. Um, my husband always jokes about this because like, I- I'll always remember this <laughs> This one time, like early, I think we only had like one, one or two kids. I went somewhere and I asked him, he was, he was going to stay home with Ethan. Maybe we had Gabe as well. And I asked him if he could maybe vacuum while I was gone. (laughs) And he was like, wait, you want me to, you want me to keep an eye on the kids and vacuum? I don't know if I can do both. (laughs) both. And I just looked at him like, are you kidding me? Like, this is what I do all the time. It's multitasking, you know? And he realized it as he was saying it. And he just like, and he even says today, he laughs and he talks about like, just how much he appreciates like the ability women have to multitask and to get so much accomplished if we really put our mind to it. And we put away those distractions, like, It's just, I think that we can accomplish so much more than we realize if we were to cut out, you know, all of these distractions of social media and just going online in general, like you said, Facebook marketplace, even just TV shows, Mm -hmm. like we really don't watch a lot of TV at all during the day. Sometimes in the evenings, my husband and I might watch something, but I don't know. It's just like, there, there's a lot that we can do if we manage our time properly. And, and that's something that I talk about, but yeah, I am totally with you. Like during my morning devotional time, actually, I've been trying to, so I used to like do my devotions in my bed early in the morning and like, I'm just confessing my sins. I would be trying to pray and a thought would pop into my head and I would think, Oh, I should jot that down really quick in my notes app. Right. So I'd open my phone And oh, there's a text message already from so-and-so. So So I would respond to them really quick. Mm -hmm. And then I would, Mm -hmm. you know, oh, I realize I have a notification here. And before I know it, I spent like 15 minutes on my phone and I've completely sabotaged my prayer time because like, because of my dumb phone. So I've been trying this year to just like come downstairs and be like, my room, my phone's in a completely different room. I come downstairs early in the morning. I'm just down here alone so that I can't even reach for it. If that, if those thoughts come in my mind, oh, well, they're going to have to wait because I know that I, mm-hmm. that whole morning time will just be sabotaged by my phone. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, it's, it's really crazy how much we can accomplish though, if we really, you know, put our minds, set our minds to it. So I agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah. I think that probably is like, The biggest obstacle to the modern homemaker is feeling like they don't have the time. And I I know you, like me, probably get comments where people say things like that, or I'll I'll have threads going on underneath some of my reels. And I think, okay, you guys have the time to not only respond, but then read other people's responses and literally have a thread going about the time you don't have to accomplish things. Please just don't watch my reel. (laughs) Just delete your Instagram and go get up and go do it because I've been there. I have so been there. But if you feel like you don't have enough time just to do the basic things in your home, something is wrong. Now, I'm not talking about if you're a single working mom, because I know for sure we'll get a comment like that. For sure. I'm talking about somebody who is a stay-at-home mom, possibly you know your husband is bringing in some kind of income or whatever, and you are home with the children and there's homemaking tasks there should be enough time. There really should be enough time if you're not taking on like too many outside things or too many distractions. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a hot take. It could be. 
<laughs> no, I, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. And I, I feel the same way. If you have the time to be on Instagram scrolling and commenting on everybody's reels, then you probably have more time than you think. <laughs> I know. I don't know how that irony isn't lost on people when I see these threads under my reels. I'm I'm like, it's just certainly you understand what's funny here, right? <laughs> like, uh, and, and most of the time I try not to see it, but occasionally I'll get on and like see what's going on and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> you just people are angry on the internet. I think that's just ugh. Yeah. I think too that sometimes it's easy to look at like all the skills you have, Lisa, and just assume that like that all happened at once. You know what I mean? Like, and, and so a homemaker might look at someone like you and just think, why well, I'll, I, how does she have time for all that? But these are, I don't know, maybe you, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I would say that all of the skills you have today, you slowly developed over time. You added one new thing, you kind of mastered that. And then maybe you added another thing. I mean, at least that's what I've done as a homemaker. Yeah. You know? Yeah. With the skills I have. Would you agree with that? Like, it's not like it just like all of these things, like we were just, you know, born with all of these gifts. No, like I had to work hard to learn how to do certain things as a homemaker to figure out like even simple things like learning how to minimize and get rid of clutter. Like, oh, okay. So one of like these, there are certain toys that just create problems in my home. Like (laughs) I don't need to have these. Like, I would just reorganize them over and over again, like put everything back into their containers over. And like, that took time for me to realize like your whole day. Wait a second. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. My kids are just dumping these over and over again. It does nothing but cause me stress. Like I need a new system here. Like I I need to, that, you know, even, even, right. Like it's not even just like baking and, and sourdough and, you know, all the things it's little things like that, that it took time for us to realize you know, how to, you know, develop all of these different skills. And anyways, I think that it's easy to look at someone who's been homemaking for a long time and just think, how do you have the time to do all that? Oh my goodness, I could never, but it's just one step at a time every year. I'm like reevaluating and how can I improve in this area and how can I be better in this area? And what's a, what's a new skill that I want to take on this year and, and once you, once that just becomes a part of your everyday, you know, um, it's not, it's not really a big deal, you know? So I don't know. Do, yes, would you agree with absolutely. that? I guess. <laughs> yes, I would 100% agree. And I try to talk about that a ton because if that's where people are doing that comparison thing to somebody who's been at something a lot longer where, you know, you were saying you have certain routines and systems and patterns in your home, like even the decluttering pattern that makes your job easier or throwing together a simple meal without having to really overthink it and overanalyze. You just know how to do those things in your home. It becomes easy. And so you can start to add on other things. And so if you haven't been a homemaker for 14 years like Andrea or 16 years like me, then just know that that's just things to learn to just keep improving on down the road. I mean, I've been a homemaker since 07. And so there are going to be certain things that are just going to be easier. And uh, a, a person who's 10, 15 years older than you can really help you out with what they've learned. Yeah, for sure. Like just I remember even just like my sourdough journey when I first started, I remember feeling like, ah, this is so overwhelming. How do people do this? Like take care of a starter. Oh my goodness. I have to feed this every day. And now it's just not even like, I don't even think about it. You know, you, yeah. Yeah. It's just not even a thing. Like I, I don't know. So yeah, I just think that again, don't compare yourself to someone who's further down the road. It's just one new skill at a time. And it's kind of like having kids, right? Like, (laughs) right. Yes. (laughs) You know, like people, you just, I don't know, you grow and you adapt and it's, I don't know, you have way more than I do twice as many. Right. (laughs) Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, you don't have them all at once. You know, you, you get used to one more, just (laughs) one child at a time. (laughs) Yes. We're just all at such different points. It's really fun for me right now because I do have two sisters who are so much younger than me. I have three sisters, but two that are way younger than me and they're both starting on things. And the questions they ask, the things they say, it reminds me that we're all on different parts of this journey 
Yes. And I remember like hearing the certain things they say, I remember being there. And I yeah. remember that, you know, we're, it's, it's weird just being in the world, you know, there's just the way that God made it. But like, it's all these people at all these different stages and knowledge levels interacting with each other. And then there's people who are 90 who are trying to be patient with the questions I yeah. ask, you know, like it's, <laughs> it's just the way it is. Like we're all, we're all on this journey and it's just, we're in such different places and we try to talk to each other, but yet we have such different backgrounds and yeah. input and, you know, practice and knowledge level. And it's all very fascinating. It keeps life interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And like my life is not going to be exactly like your life. And the things that you, that you see like on YouTube or on Instagram, like that's not, there's just so much more to our lives than that. And I, I think we just nitpick and we compare just those things. Um, and you just can't do that. You have no idea what types of things someone else is involved in, how busy they are with their church or you just, it's just, it's so silly to compare. Yeah. So that's you just, true, yeah. it's like, I don't know. It, it, you, you have no idea how, if that person has extra help or a babysitter coming twice a week or who knows, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just can't, you can't compare yourself yeah. for sure. So, but I love the fact that just like the Bible says, the older women teaching the younger, like it doesn't matter, even though you and I, we're not super far into our homemaking journey. We still are much farther than like, no, our, yeah. than I'm our, still a newbie to a lot of you in the audience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, sure. Exactly. And yet here we both have sisters. My sister just had her first baby, my youngest sister. And same thing. Like now she's asking me questions and is this normal? And what would you do here? And she's making this noise and what should I, and it's cool to be able to help somebody else who is, you know, walking down that same path that you, you know, were once on. So anyways, that's kind of my hope with this course is that I don't, you know, I, I, by no means am I creating this course to kind of tell and show people like, well, I've mastered homemaking and I'm going to teach you all how to do it. It's not that at all. Yeah. Like, the, <laughs> the purpose behind it is just to like, and I try to explain that right off the bat. Like I have not mastered it. There's so much more I want to learn. So many more areas I want to grow. But I think just being that friend to come alongside those uh, who really don't have that example in their lives, you know, and they just want someone to talk to. They just want someone to kind of explain to them uh, just simple things like organization, decluttering, you know, how to prepare a meal plan, things like that, that maybe they didn't have that, that example in their life to teach them. And so that was kind of my heart behind this. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. It launches tomorrow, actually. By the time this goes live, it'll probably be up and available. Okay. So this this is coming out, yeah, probably like in a week or two from when we're recording perfect, it. Perfect. So where can everybody find it? Um, it'll be available. There's going to be a page on my blog that I can give you a link to, Lisa, so you can put it okay. right in your description so people can find it and it'll be easy for them to grab. But yeah, I, it, it'll okay. probably have its own tab on my blog. It, Jessica has it all set up. My uh, My sister... She works with me now and she's amazing and she's done a lot of work on this too. So um, I'll get you the link so that people can click on it if, that, if this sounds like something they'd be interested in. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom. We will definitely leave a link to your new homemaking course in the description box or the show notes, depending on where you're listening to this. And just for some homemaking inspiration right now, head on over to check out Pine and Prospect Home over on her blog, her YouTube channel, her Instagram. You can find her in all those places. Thank you so much, Andrea, for joining me. Yeah, of course, Lisa. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's always fun talking to you. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Make sure to go follow along with Andrea. Check out her course and her videos and her blog. She has a lot to share and she's just so sweet about the way that she shares it. That's the thing. Uh, I think you'll find her very encouraging through your journey as a homemaker. As always, thank you so much for listening. And I will see you in the next episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life Podcast.